Hello, I'm Jeff Summit, Technical Director for Harico Golf. I'd like to show you a few tips on epoxying a shaft. While this might seem pretty rudimentary to some, I think it can help a lot of club makers new to the trade and maybe even offer a tip or two to, for those experienced club makers. There are usually three different ways epoxy sold. One of which is the individual epoxy packets. You basically fold them, cut, squeeze, and then mix the content. There's usually enough to do um, four clubs. The next method, or next packaging, is in the cartridges. And these have enough to do, probably enough for three sets or so. And you can either use the plunger or you can use the um, epoxy guns that are sold separately. And then you can dispense out equal amounts of epoxy each and every time. The third method is the um, the bottles. And these are the most economical. And that's what I'm going to demonstrate today with. The key to using the bottles is to cut the tips off the bottles so that they're exact same. So when you go to squeeze out uh, the material, it, you get an equal amount every time. The directions are usually printed on the, um, on the bottle. You can either mix by weight or by volume. But I always find volume to be uh, uh, the best method. In most cases, the uh, shafting epoxy is a one-to-one -one mix a mixture. And it's also good enough to eyeball, and it's a non-critical. That means if you mix a little bit more of one or another, you're going to still get an adequate bond. Now, there's all sorts of items that you can use to mix uh, the epoxy on. And call me old-fashioned, but I like good old-fashioned masking tape. For one, once it's on my table, it's not going to slip back and forth. And secondly, when it's dried, I could just peel it up and dispose of it properly. And what I'd like to do is when I mix, uh, say, enough for eight irons, I'll pull out a strip of masking tape about four or five inches long. Then I'll squeeze out four equal length beads about three inches long with part A. And then I take part B bottle and squeeze out the same four equal length beads of three inches. But I don't put them on top of one another, at least right away. Because since you're eyeballing it, you may need to look at it. And if you need to add a little bit more of one versus the other, you could do so at that time. Now, how long do you mix the epoxy? Well, it really is impossible to overmix unless, of course, you're using fast setting epoxy and you mix for the entire working time but minimum should be 10 seconds for at least small batches and a little bit longer for larger batches. Uh, just make sure it looks consistent. To blend the two parts together, I use some sort of mixing stick. Now this doesn't have to be rocket science, as you can use a number of items. I've been using the same quarter inch wooden dowel for like eight years now. And once I'm done mixing, I just take something and wipe off the excess. I don't have to throw away a popsicle stick each and every time I'm going to mix a, a batch of epoxy. Now some club makers will resort to using a nail, a tea, or whatever they have. Well, as long as it does a job is all that matters. Now whatever you do, don't fill up the hosel. In my opinion, you're not just wasting epoxy, but you're creating a potential hazard. You see if epoxy goes up inside the narrow opening of a graphite shaft, it can create an epoxy core. And if it exceeds the top of the hosel, well, it could provide a shear point at which the shaft could break. And I find many of the shafts that do break can be pinpointed due to use of excess epoxy. Now, some club makers may use a mixing stick to apply the epoxy on the shaft or in the head. I just simply use the shaft and just roll the shaft tip in and then mix it and just put it in, in the uh, head. No other epoxy is added inside the hosel because if you do it right, you'll still have more than an adequate amount to bond the club onto the shaft. This is my preferred method because it takes less time and cleanup afterwards. Insert the shaft into the hosel by slowly rotating in an up and down motion. This will ensure the epoxy will thoroughly coat the entire bonding surface for a superior bond. It's that easy.